Oh, this is definitely going to be the episode where I have technical problems. Well, if it's Tuesday, you know the routine. It can mean only one thing. But today, I got to tell you, I I have a funny problem. I'm going to have some technical difficulties. Um, The background behind me is a disaster, but I did vote, and I voted for Mike Fasolo. Mike, (laughs) did you you vote today? Uh, We didn't have any elections out here, no. You didn't? It was just here in Jersey? Just in Jersey. Well, uh, yeah, I guess in uh, New York, too, because my father voted. Did he? Yeah. Your father got himself out of the house to go vote. (laughs) Yes. If we know your father, we know how amazing that (laughs) sentence is. Um, (laughs) But I did. I voted. Uh, So whoever you would have voted for, I voted opposite, and we negate each other out. Well, there you go. It's a nice nice balancing act. We sure do have a good balance. We actually have a pretty good show. I use the word actually because I'm aware that not all of our shows are that good, Mike. What? How dare you? How dare the with me? Um, if I blink out at any point, the show is in your hands. Oh, that's that's not a good that's not a good thing. Mike, your robe looks a little disheveled. It's like uneven. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and then are it just looking, slowly drifts. Down. Are we actually looking at your own undergarments there? Like what's going on? No, that's just a regular t-shirt. That's the regular T-shirt. The old T-shirt. Because, you know, it's getting colder out here. Yeah. <laughs> what does it hit there? It's probably down to about, I think it was 71 in the house today, and I had to put on the robe because I was cold. 71. <laughs> <laughs> how, yeah. do you, how do you do it, my friend? How do you do it? Do you do it just for us to make sure that we're good? Yep, yep. Wow. Well, so, Mike, we have a show tonight. In this show, we will talk a little bit about a cover breakdown. We have a What Should Mike Fasolo Watch episode because you failed to give me a trivia, and that means you have to watch a movie of the selection of our community. I'm sure you trust them. I know that they will always do a good job for you. And um, I also will be, I'll give you some announcements this uh, this show, Mike. Uh, The next two weeks, our former uh, wizard colleague and a friend of the comic book school, Michael Dolce of Cyrus Studios, will be subbing in for uh, me and you. We're going to take two weeks off, Mike. I know. It's always nice to have a vacation, especially a paid one. (laughs) That's right. We continue to make money while we sleep here on (laughs) the... uh, the advertising dollars that Roy, do you know, you know that like if we hit a, thre- a certain threshold uh, of YouTube subscribers, we can indeed um, get uh, ad supported dollars. Yeah. We just have to hit that threshold, which I think we're quite far away from. We are <laughs> very far away from, but you know what? We're glad for every one of you who joins us here and Gatilla's on. I've watched some real garbage <laughs> stuff, Mike. <laughs> Well, I'm Katilla looking forward to the truth. selections. He's, he's not sugarcoating it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Glenn. All right, Mike. So uh, today we're going to be talking about covers with impact, and we're going to be focusing on the Incredible Hulk, but also the Incredible Hulk versus somebody else, or the Hulk being the Hulk. And what I'm going to show you are some great covers of the Hulk. And then we will draw our own cover of the Hulk at the end. We've, 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 we've done a little bit of pre-homework. Um, these are classic covers. 
and fairly close to what I might have drawn if I were given an assignment from my Marvel editor, Hulk versus somebody else. And the mm -hmm. reason I like these was because it did show that the Hulk was always bigger, always scarier, and yet our hero was not backing down from the fight. What do you think, Mike? That's, that's good. You don't want to back down from the Hulk. Right. Like, you know, you look at Thor. He's like a, he's a, a tanker level hero. He's got really all the superpowers, uh, but the Hulk towers over him. I mean, just look at the size difference of that Hulk's foot versus Hulk's toe versus <laughs> Thor's entire foot. And then we see Bucky fleeing, but he's actually luring him toward Captain America. I, I find these to be two great covers. Uh, I'll get into it a little bit more. Any, any final thoughts to add on, on these two? Well, Hulk is, Hulk is always scary because he's, he's, you know, obviously super strong. And as far as I know, he, uh, he really can't be beaten. Like, how do you, how do you beat the Hulk? Uh, it's true. And then, the, you know, you can see Hulk has always got an angry look on his face. His fists are always clenched. Uh, these are iconic. It's, I, I'd like to note that uh, we'll get into this a little bit more. It is very important in any of these stories to show the heroes using their powers, looking heroic. Nobody wants to see them in a coffee shop. <laughs> <laughs> and yet so many comic stories have people in coffee shops and I, I i just find it stunning unless there's an irony or a purposeful juxtaposition it shouldn't be there maybe maybe hulk just wanted some tea maybe hulk wanted some tea um but unless it's purposeful ironic uh or something i'm gonna show you two more covers um the one on the right um, this is one of my Grail covers. Uh, I bought this uh, for a ridiculous amount of money um, because when I was growing up as a Ute in New Jersey, <laughs> as a Ute in New Jersey, this was hanging on the wall at the comic book shop, which I should note was in a dirty, dilapidated shopping mall next to a head shop. Mike, what's a head shop? Do we, do people know? I have, I have no idea what a head shop is. Head shop was a place that sold uh, drug paraphernalia, but not the actual drugs. Such as? Pipes. Like what purpose would somebody have for a pipe this big <laughs> and a so, Jimi Hendrix black light poster? Okay. So you just couldn't get the stuff you would put in the pipe, but you could get the pipe. Right next door to the comic shop. <laughs> Literally. They got a built-in audience, right? There. Right. They were selling black lights and and uh, all kinds of like, you know, weird things and, and uh, rolling paper, but not the marijuana that went in the <laughs> rolling paper. Uh, and this was long before the legalization of any of these. Uh, hold on. Unless you knew somebody and if you were cool. Uh, cool. I'm not sure if he's talking about the headshot or, or what, but. Oh wait, uh, that he had. He said, honestly, I think the Hulk is jealous of Thor's hair. I mean, that is a crappy haircut. Yeah, the Hulk has never really had good haircut. That's probably why he's so angry half the time. He is. They they were. You get the stuff for the pipe, right? And then uh, Philip Burnett, who I should note, Mike is a, a very talented artist and a very uh, a very nice guy. Uh, I'm glad to see him on the show. And he knew that the head shop had smoking accessories because if you bought a a like a, a a carton of Marlboro, they might not have the paper inside. Why did they call it the head shop, though? Uh, there's probably some sort of feed your head reference. Oh, uh, that weird. yeah, we've really gone far afoul of where I wanted to be <laughs> with this show. So I did buy this cover. I have never. Oh wait, he so they were called water pipes for smoking tobacco, good sir. Oh well. If it's good, sir, then I, water pipes. I feel like he's tipped his hat to me. Good, sir. <laughs> his bowler hat. Well, <laughs> because of Bob Marley. I don't even know. Is that like a full sentence? Just Bob Marley? Yep. Sometimes, Philip, if you meet him in person, he walks in and he goes, Bob Marley? <laughs> and then he adds, I have no idea. <laughs> All right. So I bought this cover, Battles the Inhumans. One of the things I loved about it was Hulk interacting. Uh, with the title, I always thought that was tremendous. The Hulk under great strain, 
but I also love the color where, you know, you go from yellow to orange to red to purple to mix in the green and the white. This cover always blew me away. It stands continually as one of my favorite uh, comic book covers ever, but I never read the story inside. What? You just I don't know, it up. I don't know how much I spent. It was, it was a sizable amount of money when I bought it. I remember buying it thinking, what am I doing? And then I never, never once read it. You never opened that comic. I just wanted it for the cover. All right. Well, you probably could have just bought the the poster for the cover, and then no, 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 no. I wanted the comic. And then on the on the left, uh, Marvel Secret Wars. A um, mm -hmm. little hard to see, but I think the purpose of this cover is to squeeze the heroes into the tiniest space, using what we would call in the biz negative space, Mike. Drawing your eye to the cent center, where the Hulk is clearly keeping everybody alive. Two tremendous covers. The one on the left, of course, telling an effective story right there in the cover. I wanted to see if that was really in there. Uh, I have this issue. I've never read it either. <laughs> I bought it because I want to see if it's in there. I love I the cover. I think it's a great cover. What do you think? Well, I think it's definitely great. I mean, it's it's funny that he's beneath 150 billion tons. That's that's a lot of weight for one little. Oh, I never even read that. Yeah, yeah, one hundred and fifty billion tons. Where they couldn't have just put a hundred tons, <laughs> or even just fifty billion tons. They should have put one hundred and fifty-one billion tons. That would have made it even more dramatic. And he's not happy. Okay, so uh, here, just Hulk is showing his solo hero hero potential. Um, my uh, mouse is stuck. Am I stuck? Nope, you're not stuck. No, oh, I got it. Just, your computer just you, this computer. I got I this, this is the new computer. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, Wolverine and Hulk often uh paired together. Yeah, you're right, Philip. I should read more comics. Actually, I should read fewer comics and maybe collect a few less, but that notwithstanding, uh Wolverine uh made his first appearance in Incredible Hulk number 181, Mike. I have this issue and I've read it a thousand times. Okay, well, that's good. Yeah. At least you read it. There is nothing salvageable from this issue. I couldn't sell it for 20 bucks because I read it. I loved this issue so much. Now, can Wolverine's claws cut the Hulk? Depends on the storyline. I, I, I believe he has okay. from time to time. All right. Um, uh, ultimate... Uh, Wolverine versus Hulk. Uh, I believe Hulk eats Wolverine. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I know I read one story where they were fighting somewhere in the mountains and the Hulk ripped Wolverine in half and threw like his legs over a mountain or something. And just left yeah. him there. And I think one of the issues, it did answer the question. He could not cut Hulk. So Hulk ate him and then <laughs> digested him. <laughs> But you can't kill Wolverine like by eating them. I'm I'm not sure, but uh, it certainly seemed to work in the comic. I like the one on the right. To be honest, I'm glad that I'm glad that Cattell is being honest with us now. <laughs> I was a little concerned. I was like, Glenn, be honest with us. Oh my goodness, this this computer's not working right tonight. Maybe your uh, your connections aren't plugged in properly. My like... connecties are not connected in properly. But uh, you may have to carry on without me for a minute. Um, shape language is the key on that secret wars. Let's see, shape language. Which shape language? I don't know. I mean, I wish I, I wish I had done a little bit of homework ahead. Maybe even read the issue. <laughs> but Catilla Burnett's way ahead of us, and then I think they can from the inside. Oh, uh, get out of the Hulk! All right, the Wolverine's claws are about as dangerous as getting stabbed by a fark fork as far as the Hulk's concerned. I think he's probably right. Yeah. Oh, uh, old man Logan, I think Wolverine cut his cut out banner or something. Yeah, there's there was something. It was like old man Logan or something. Wow. Some good stuff. But uh, I picked what I think are three classics. Uh, the middle one there, of course, the McFarlane one. I mean, super creative. Uh, this was around during our wizard days. This was such a tremendous issue. So influential. McFarlane has created so many covers that were incredibly influential. And then the one on the right, just once again, showing the size difference, but not Wolverine backing down. What do you think, Mike? I think it's great. I love every one of these covers. The one on the, on the left, the 181, 
looks a little retro, but still it's good. Well, it was from the 70s. Yeah, I know. Well, still, that's why it looks retro. It does look retro because it is retro. Okay. So, but today I want to talk a little bit about this particular cover and what makes it so effective. Uh, again, one of my favorites, I did buy this on the newsstand. This gives you a sense of my age, which is really not that old, Mike. All things. Did you read it? I've read it a million times. Okay. Love this issue. My particular copy of this is in bad shape because I did read it a lot. Um, but I always love this cover. Um, and then later I did an analysis of it, Mike, and I just thought if we could just break this down and talk about why it works. So in the first case, you, you have Captain America. You don't actually see the Hulk. You literally see one fist, but you know exactly who it is. Of course, he's green and it's got a giant fist. Right. The hero, Captain America, is not looking heroic. He looks like he's going to be beat, right? And his literal back is against the wall, <laughs> right? So uh, Burnett was talking about the visual language. Well, one of the visual languages of comics is that we our eye tracks from the left to the right. So in this particular case, what I wanted to show was the force of the Hulk's fist creates three visual cues. Q1 is the fist coming in from the left side, from the top down, where you're just looking at this green, practically it's an arrow that's pointing to the center of the shield. Now it's there's an explosive force. You don't even see the star on the shield. It's an explosive, powerful force that literally continues down. Your eye then shifts a little bit over, not the exact same trajectory, but to Captain America's eyes. Now, one of the most important things that we need to know about characters with uh, putting them on the page is we as humans look into each other's eyes. We look into the character's eyes to get a cue. Captain America's clenched eyes tell us what we need to know, that his teeth right now are not smiling. No. Right? He's this there, is... There. He's, in, he's in fear. Right. He is legitimately afraid this could be his aim, his end. Now, the, the, the theory behind the Z pattern on a page is that we read in a Z pattern that you could, we'll get into that in another show. But the key thing on this is a great comic will almost always lead you to the bottom right-hand corner of the page, which theoretically is where you would turn the page. Mm. So the eye draws down to the sentence, then came the Hulk. So if somebody were new to comics, didn't know who this character was, A, they would be intrigued. B, they would say, why does he have a green fist? But for those of us who knew who the Hulk was, we were like, this is going to be a great fight. I'll pause there. What do you think, Mike? I think that's great. And and I would have never guessed that you, they, uh, you know, the artist draws it so your visual acuity goes to his eyes, and then down to the corner to turn the page. Some do. Some do it um, uh, naturally. They just know how to tell a visual story, while as others uh, are doing it very intentionally. So now what happens on the next panel? Okay, so let's break this out. Now, if we were to strip away everything, the backgrounds, the, the trade dress, the title, what you see here on the right is a pretty effective... Once again, it's an arrow, but the important thing now is you can really see that in the center of the image is the shield. This is the point of conflict. This is the point where they both clash. Hulk, clearly his fist is almost as large, if not larger than Captain America's head, and his shield is quite large. But the point is on the right, when you strip everything away, you can see that this literally draw, drawn a bullseye in the middle of the page where the two of them meet in the conflict. That's pretty neat. Pretty neat. Now, let's go one step further, Mike. Let's take a look what happens. Uh, oh, I just zoomed in because I thought <laughs> it would be nice for us to be able to discuss it together. While it's zoomed in, any thoughts on this, Mike? Well, I think it's, I mean, I would like to know if, if he did all this just instinctively after being an artist for so long, or if he planned it out, like you're saying, let's draw the reader's eye right to the center. And that's where he put the shield and then everything else. Well, it, you know, there's any number of things that 
you know, we can ask these creators and sometimes they'll remember, sometimes they don't. Uh, so, uh, Burnett, can you read this while I take a little sip here, Mike? Sure. Uh, ahem. Shape language denotes intensity in this, much like the Secret Wars cover. Cap's face is crunched between a shield and a brick wall with the Hulk's fist adding to the pressure. Wow. wow. Burnett's smart too, huh? He is. Yeah, I like how he drew our attention to the ahem. Ahem. And then he added one thing. The bullseye is spot on. Yep. That's right. Uh, and I voted today. <laughs> All right, Mike, we got one more uh, here. So we've zoomed in. Uh, we can see that this, even as a standalone image, works. You yeah, don't yeah. even need to have any of the words. You know from this image that if this is the story inside this book, if you like this sort of thing, that's what's going to be inside. Yeah, this. you're opening it up and reading, finding out what's going to happen. Or not. You know, if you're looking for somebody in a coffee shop, <laughs> you're not going to get that. <laughs> that's that's true. Perhaps. Perhaps. I feel like I've frozen. Oh, I unfroze. Burnett. Oh, I'm glad that we, we've reminded him of his civic duty. Go vote, Philip. Go vote. He's got to go vote. Okay. So last, uh, last uh, frame, Mike, I want to show. Um, I did want to point out that when you look at this image, the important thing to note about the background is that it doesn't distract from the foreground. Too many artists, colorists, anchors will put equal weight on the background. What you want the background to do is accentuate and give you placement of space and give you a sense of where you are. In this case, you can see that it went pale yellow. Now, if you were to think about the primary colors, we had a very saturated red, very saturated green. It was important for that yellow background to fade out so that the foreground would pop to give the illusion of depth. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So, so we told Philip about his civic duty. Uh, I should, I should note, I told Philip about, because you didn't vote, Mike, right? You don't even I, vote. I, I did not vote today, no. So Burnett, thanks, buddy. That should be. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Mike, uh, that's why this stands as what I believe to be um, not just a, a fantastic Hulk cover, but something that is a great uh, tool for teaching how... Uh, to get effective visual storytelling. Am I getting feedback? No, I got, I got it dinged. My, my you got dinged? Dinged, yeah, texted. Oh. Makes the ding noise. So as I was rapping, as I was pulling all of this together into a coherent narrative, you you decided that that was a good time for... I, I didn't decide to send myself a text message. Someone else did. <laughs> it wasn't up to me. <laughs> Ah, man, there's no respect here, but you know what? Um, so do you think we should do more stuff like this, Mike? Do you like this? I, I think we do because this is all stuff that I never, never like thought of. I would look at that cover and be like, this is a great cover, but I would never think, oh, the bullseye was, you know, the shield was there for the bullseye and all the stuff that you broke down. Well, you were like, I never thunk of that. I never thunk of it. I never thunk of it. So, yes, all right. you, uh, you should, should do that. You want to? Do you want to get that? Is it? Is it? It's uh, yeah. I gotta. I gotta turn it. It's off. being on. It's being well, it's on. Coming, it's coming through on my computer, and it's it's uh, it's still dinging loud. Being on uh, on a live show, getting in the way of your texts. Okay, Mike. Uh, as I said, Mike Dolce will take over for the next two weeks because uh, next week, um, me and some of my comic book friends are heading out to Morocco, where we will bring comic book school. To Casablanca, there is wow. the uh, International Children and Youth Book Fair in Morocco, and we will be going there talking about comic books, how comic books are made. Uh, we will be live casting from there uh, onto this channel at random times when we can get people to come on. Uh, but we will be teaching the craft and business of making comics, about how to make a great cover, how to tell a story on a page, how to format your script. And we will be doing that in Morocco. That is that is quite impressive. You didn't know that? I did not know that. I thought I told you that. So uh, I, it'll be me, our friend Darren Sanchez, who uh, 
Yep, Darren. Uh, a lot of people forget Darren is a, a successful writer as well as a successful editor and publisher. Uh, so he will be there. He will be teaching uh, class. He'll be talking about what it was like to be a Marvel editor. And we, he will be helping me to interview uh, fellow creators who will be here in the United States and will be bringing them into Morocco for the first time via live stream. That is quite impressive. Quite impressive. Quite impressive. Casablanca. Are you gonna are you gonna react out uh the Casablanca movie? I will. And we're gonna go to uh Rick's Club American and <laughs> and then Sean will be with us. Uh oh. Sean uh who comes to every comic book school every year uh at new york comic-con he'll be bringing that pencil and doing the pencil -y things that he does oh so well and who's been on our show i can see from the background he now has sixty-one thousand followers that's a lot of followers mm, my goodness a lot of people know and love uh sean chen ah beachside buddy that's right so you're I not going to be live streaming from morocco um, not for 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time since it'll be like two in the morning there. So uh, we will we will do it during the day and it'll just randomly pop up in the channel. So nice. if you uh, don't subscribe yet to our channel, uh, definitely do. So, uh, Mike, I have some random news because I uh, am easily amused. Okay. Uh, and it has almost nothing to do with comics, but I just felt like this was random news that entertained me that Tyson needed to recall 30,000 <laughs> pounds of dino nuggets. Well, were they, did they find out they were made from uh, dinosaur meat instead of chicken? I, I don't know. But somewhere someone went and went to like, I don't know, a design school. And they had to design not just this packaging, but these little shapes of chicken. They were like, it's going to be chicken. And you're like, chicken and what? And you're like, and a T-Rex. Stegosaurus? But I just found that the idea that they were like on the phone and they were like, you have to come into the office today. Why? This is my day from working from home. We've got to recall 30,000 pounds <laughs> of dino nuggets. Why? They've got metal pieces. And I'm like, metal! But it wasn't that. Not that. But, you know, still, still fun. Not yeah. for the people who get the metal in their nuggets, but yeah. So this is my random news, Mike. This has nothing to do with comics, but I just I read the news and I entertain myself, and I actually save news articles like this because <laughs> I I just find it not that they had to recall the it, but the sheer volume thirty thousand pounds. Well, there's probably a lot of chicken nuggets produced, and you know when you find a piece of metal, you got to get all of them. But fortunately, it only hit the dinos. <laughs> all right mike i add this to uh something else that entertained me um i actually put this on my private instagram not on the public one i ask you uh is this a good idea or a bad idea i should know mike we it, truth be told i don't prep you with any of this right no. like, you just you just see this in real time with everybody else i see i see the graphic and then i wonder what's happening right so um this is just a new segment, Mike, that I call good idea or bad idea. Are you ready? I'm ready. Is this a good idea or a bad idea? That is a fantastic idea. I see. I agreed with you. I thought, how can you perk up your carbs and sugar waffles or pancakes with something that has literally no redeeming <laughs> nutritional value, does not exist in nature, you wouldn't even find this. You couldn't tap a tree and get blue blue syrup out of it. There are there right. It doesn't even claim to be fresh from Canada. It's like straight <laughs> from a food lab. Maple flavored syrup. What they should have done was name it, you know, something flavorful instead of just saying it tastes like maple syrup. It tastes like the ocean, or it yes, tastes like it's Captain Crunch. I know, but it's it's just ocean blue maple syrup. They should have named it something awesome. What I think is funny about this is that Captain Crunch is really small, then Ocean Blue, then they put artificially, because in case you thought that this was naturally occurring. From the blue maple tree. And then they put the word maple in big letters. Well, why, we gotta let you know. 
It's right? Roy yeah. Ryan. That's just like you got a picture of a pirate with a with the mustache that's clearly Captain Crunch, and they made the word maple big. <laughs> and then I didn't realize this until I until I really looked closely. This here, I thought this was like a sunset with water. That's actually supposed to be, I guess, a pancake. It's a pancake with, with butter. butter and blue on it. Why is it Captain Crunch? He has nothing to do with right. Like, but that's why I'm asking, Glenn. You didn't answer the question. Is it, it is. a good idea or a bad idea? It's a good idea because kids love sort of different things. You know, they I mean it didn't it didn't last, but they like that that green ketchup or the the yeah. purple mustard. That's kind of cool. It's a novelty. So getting blue maple syrup, that'd be great for a kid. I, I'm gonna say that that Captain Crunch associates favorably for breakfast yes that that's that's where i'm going to go with this catilla i think that captain crunch and why they say ocean blue i guess is captain crunch like a captain he's, he's of a, a pirate ship or something was yeah, he a sailor? He's a, sailor he's a captain was he yeah is captain good in the on a pirate ship is he supposed to be like he's, a not, no, he's not a pirate what is he He's a he's a captain. He's like he runs a, a yacht club or something like that. He's actually a captain. Yeah, captain. <laughs> All right, so Mike, uh, I'm going to give this uh, a thumbs up and say this is a good idea. You, what's your vote? I absolutely give it a thumbs Two up. Thumbs up. I hope people uh, add their thoughts in this. And then also uh, because Mike, you unfortunately failed to give us. Oh wait, hold on, Catilla. Wait, Burnett says. Um, He's part of this balanced breakfast. I, I think I think Burnett's on to something. You have a bowl of cereal with Captain Crunch as your side dish, like a soup, and then your main <laughs> your main entree is that glob of uh, butter and the bleeding blue uh, yeah. ocean, and then insulin. Right. That's, that's the shot of breakfast insulin. that I would like. Right, and. Um, very small part, right? Like, like you, you would, you might have, um, like a, uh, like a slice of an apple or something as well. No, that's uh, that's no. You don't want to, you don't want to fill yourself up on things like that. Yeah, uh, Gatilla says he's a sea captain. Yeah, All right. a yacht or something. Uh oh. Uh, so Gatilla's already jumped ahead. So I'm gonna just jump ahead. What should Mike watch? Uh, Gatilla, you want to read Gatilla's statement? Uh, so I think Mike should watch Hobgoblins, unadulterated by MST3K. I like MST3K. Uh, just a movie. Range 15 is bad, but I don't hate Mike. If you won't find Hobgoblins, watch Glenn Danzig's Verotica. It sucks. Wow. Okay. Wow. I've never heard of any of those. I feel like he was hitting the keyboard hard when he wrote it. <laughs> 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 just feel like the key oh by the way mike we i forgot we um we did um let's go back let's go back um we also drew our own so here's what we're gonna do uh, I, i'm gonna go first i'll pull mine up first mike uh okay. we, we each uh -oh, i'm about to lose connection you might have to hold yours up first because uh -oh. there goes my computer there's something wrong i have one Good of these connections. Years. Yeah, I got one of these USB C connections. One of your wires is is uh, floppy. The wires are loose. Uh, am I still connected? You're still there. Are you there? I'm there. All right. Well, why don't you hold yours up because mine isn't moving. Oh, hold on. Let's let's go big on this. So I asked Mike. I said if Mike were to draw his own. Hulk versus Captain America. So you got Cap hurling the shield at the Hulk, clearly larger with a fading point perspective, plenty of activity on either sides to show the buildings, a car off to the side, a car here in the extreme foreground. Uh, Mike, I have to say you told a pretty effective <laughs> story. I would want to read this. Yeah, it seems pretty interesting. I, was I like it. All right, so I'm going to show you what I would have drawn if uh, Marvel had asked me, what I would have done is this. I would have gone uh, full on uh, Hulk with Captain America on his knees, not giving up 
throwing a punch toward the Hulk, but uh, the Hulk clearly dominant. Uh, not all that different from what we saw, but I think the one that we saw, um, I would have to say, is much better. Just a little bit, slightly. Right, but I would have chosen a not exciting pose, and you would have chosen an exciting pose. Oh, we're going to lose me again. Here we go. Yep, you're still there. Yep, I promise that uh, next time we will, we will not do this again. <laughs> All right, so that was it. I hope everybody enjoyed our art. Uh, here's what I'm going to do, Mike. I'm going to jump ahead past our random news. Good idea or bad idea. We know that's a good idea. So, Mike, here are two movies, and I hope that the audience uh, weighs in uh, to give us their choice. I find them equally exciting for you. But please wait for both before you uh, vote and tell us which Mike should watch. So, Mike, um, the first was a classic. Break-In was a complete off-the-hook classic game changer. Uh, I, I I don't say that as a joke. Break-In was a huge movie. It was. Very and good. it changed. Um, why was Cap fighting an alligator? <laughs> That's it's easy for Burnett to say because Burnett can draw, right? Because <laughs> Burnett can draw. So it's all fun and games <laughs> when we're on Burnett's territory because he can draw. I'd recommend Willy Wonka, Willy's Wonka Wonderland with Nicholas. It sounds like a like a porn twist title, doesn't it? Willy's Wonderland. Uh, I've heard of that. I think that's, I don't know if it's a horror movie, but I think it's supposed to be like a weird paranormal thriller kind of thing maybe it sounds dirty doesn't it it sounds like one of those double entendre well, then i definitely watch it philip philip claims to be sorry of course <laughs> the guy he, the he guy can draw he's laughing yeah he's a professional artist he's getting paid to draw and like he he's he's beating me up mike he's beating me up that's all right but maybe Burnett will have to do it like a like a like a group watch with you mike a party watch uh, but breaking was an important movie uh, but then they, I think, potentially went one step too far because then they had break into Electric Boogaloo. It was a money grab. It was a it was. money grab. And it, you can see, Mike, look at that cast. Ice T and uh, Shab Shabadoo. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Shabadoo. <laughs> Shabadoo. It yeah, was he's, not... the, he's, the, he's the Electric Boogaloo guy. Oh, it's an actual film. The other one uh, being Willie's Wonder land some there is some enjoy to be had with willie willie's wonderland and philip ensures us that it is not a porno um i'm not sure if i would if i would like put that on my my pull list no no pun intended willie's i would, wonderland. Not, I would not put that on my pull list because i think i wouldn't want that to be found if i died suddenly they'd be like why is this on his pull list Ice T was pretty hip in the day. Ice T still pretty hip, actually. And Ice T doesn't look much different, does he? Uh, no, he doesn't look much different this at all. This movie was what, like 1984? He doesn't really look much different. Yeah, he's done well for himself. Oh, look at Darren Sanchez. Hey, Darren. Darren Sanchez. Oh, wait, hold on, Darren. If you just came on, hold on. Let's just show. Oh, look at that. There's Darren <laughs> Sanchez. Hey, Darren. Hey, On the Morocco. Hey, Darren. I'm sure people love watching me flip through the same slides over and over. Okay, so um, you can either vote for Mar Mike to watch one of these two movies. Darren, uh, Eight-Legged Freaks is not on that, but Slaughterhouse is. <laughs> it, is it is about a murderous sloth, and it's a play on the words slaughterhouse. Do, do I get to vote or no? I just got to take what happens. You got to take whatever comes. Uh, Psycho, PG, Psycho Gorman. Everyone needs to watch that movie. I will put it on the list. Oh, Mike, Arts Mermaid is on. Do you know uh, a little bit of trivia about Arts Mermaid? She just I, got engaged yesterday. Oh, congratulations, Arts Mermaid. Yes, Ariel uh, is now engaged. She started off as our intern here at comic book school uh, and is now uh, getting hitched. All right. Well, congrats. she's going to be getting hitched in a big ceremony and all, all kinds. I don't know what she's going to have a big <laughs> ceremony, but she is engaged. 
So, Mike, uh, Slaughterhouse, new movie. Uh, and I do note that if you look along the right column here, you can see where these movies are available. You can okay. see they're in Hulu, Amazon Prime, Vudu, Max. And then uh, you can watch this on Hulu, which is where it's in my queue. Okay. Honestly, it really is in my queue. Apple TV, Redbox, Vudu. Uh, so it uh, looks like Burnett's already uh, weighed in. <laughs> Slaughterhouse might be slightly more bearable than Breaking 2. You're welcome, uh, Ariel. Congratulations. We're, we're really happy for you. Um, so Slaughterhouse, uh, he's given the, the the vote for that. Oh, oh, thank you. It was my birthday. Hey, happy belated birthday. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, Burnett, as if Breaking 2 had Sinbad, it might be a different story. It's true. But how would it be a different story, Burnett? Would it make it the one you'd vote for or the one you didn't? I think if Sinbad was in it, you'd have to vote for it. Sinbad was in it. Ah, look at Darren, Mike. What's he say okay. there? Slother House. That's nice. All right. That's two for Slother House. All right. Two for Slother House. <laughs> Go ahead. Read it out, Mike, for the... Uh... All right. By the way, Slother House sounds awesome. I don't know if it really does, but I think it'll be definitely better than Breaking 2. GTG, that means she's got to go. Congratulations, Ariel. Thank you for the birthday wishes and congratulations on your engagement. Congrats. Just like Damn. your ma'am. All right, Mike, uh, did you tally? Yeah, two. Two for Slaughterhouse. Oh, wait, is this a tiebreaker? Gatilla gives us Slaughterhouse? There's three. It looks like now, Mike. I, I don't want any of your. The last review you did was like thumbs up, thumbs down. I'm looking for like an in depth, three time Emmy award winning analysis, a la what we just did with the Hulk covers. I'm looking for. I'm looking for you going big. All right. Well, you got to give me some time then to uh, to lay everything out. I'll be in Morocco for two weeks. With Karen, <laughs> so we will. We will. We will give you your your time and a uh, fresh reminder. Uh, in the next two weeks, as uh, Darren Sanchez, Sean Chen, and a whole host of other amazing creators descend upon uh, the Morocco Book Fair, um, we will be teaching uh, the, the craft and business of making comics internationally. Uh, we've uh, prepared a, an amazing uh, list of guests and an itinerary. And again, uh, stay tuned on the channel because we will be uh, having shows Tuesday at 8 p.m. over the next two weeks. Uh, Mike Dolce uh, from Sire Studios will be putting on two great shows. But randomly, we will be popping up and interviewing creators uh, live from Morocco. Maybe we'll get some uh, Moroccan audience and uh, bump up our subscribers. That I'm I'm hoping that we get a little bit. Um Burnett says there seems to be unanimity here, Mike. We better get a dictionary because I'm not even sure what that means. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta write slother has down so I don't remember. Don't yeah, forget. all right. Oh, Gatilla wants to know how the movie will hurt you. Uh, Burnett says, uh, buddy should watch Slaughterhouse so Mike has someone to commiserate with. Um, well, it's in your queue, so you're gonna watch it anyway. I'm thinking uh, we should all watch it with Mike <laughs> so we can all commiserate. <laughs> and then Darren, a Casablanca podcast will be 10 30 noon Wednesday through Saturday. Doesn't that kind of just sound cool? Casablanca podcast. Casablanca. Ah. And I froze again. Did I freeze? <laughs> You're not frozen. Uh, because it freezes for me. You froze, but thank God. And then the then the monitor will blink out and then it blinks on. So I, I think I have to find a, a new USB. Yeah, signal. yeah. You got a loose connection there somewhere. I got a loose connection, but not something that you could really fix during a live show. Um, all right. Where are we? Did I? Oh, no. Yeah, that worked out well. All right, Mike, talk amongst yourselves. All right. There we go. Next two weeks, special guest host, Michael Dolce. Don't forget to tune in. Yeah, well, Man, buddy's my, my monitor really froze, huh? Uh oh, are you are you seeing nothing? No, I'm seeing uh, something. 
Well, I'm glad that we had a wham bang ending to this show. As it should be. As it should be. So thank you, Mike, for putting up with it. Thank you, all of us, uh, for putting up with the uh, the problems of all the podcasts <laughs> in the world. She had to walk into mine. For that, you win. You you definitely won the uh, – so is this camera's on? This camera's on, yeah. Yep, the camera's Lopez on. Burnett, I love it. Sounds good. Mike, it was great to, to see you, and uh, we will see everybody uh, in two weeks. But be sure to stick around uh, for Comic Book School Live. And, um, yeah, I'll see you back in the United States in a few weeks, Mike. Yeah, have a good time in Morocco, bud. Bye, Mike. Bye, everybody.